Well, quite frankly, um, the the internet searches is just been organic by posting PR ah! web press releases. I'm out. I am so Thank out. God. Is this a joke? Make sure to leave a like and don't forget to subscribe to Spacebound for more top 10 videos every day. Turn on notifications so you never miss a video. Leave a friendly comment and I'll make sure to reply to every single one of you. Hi and welcome to Spacebound, where today we'll be looking at 10 deals that the sharks definitely regret taking. She brought her uh, fashion line in. She makes clothes, high-end designer luxury clothing for women size 12 or over. Number 10, Gayla Bentley Fashion. Modern women's wear for modern women sizes 12 through 28. Sounds like a promising idea, right? Well, where is it now? Gayla walked in the tank a little bit later in the first season and instantly connected with Damon and Barbara who have climbed aboard for a 50% stake in the company at $250,000. All three worked together after the show, getting everything in order to begin their partnership. Eventually, Gayla received the investment, and that was it. The idea was to get a few brick and mortar locations out there, but instead it was Gayla who was out of there. The deal, that is. And Damon explained she got the investment and neither he nor Barbara ever heard from Gayla again. The website she would use to push her project hasn't even been touched since 2010. Correct me if I'm wrong, but couldn't this be considered theft? Nikki, walk us through your business model. How do you make money? All of our members obviously pay a monthly membership fee. Number 9. Toy Guru Anytime you ask Mark and Kevin what the worst investment they made was, this is it. Considering themselves to be the Netflix of toys, Toy Guru's business model allowed customers to rent toys by the month for their children. Theoretically, the business was a phenomenal idea considering how kids of course get tired of the toys rather quickly nowadays. With that in mind, Mark Cuban and Kevin O'Leary sought an opportunity and offered $200,000 for a 35 equity stake in the company. Not long after that, however, the company filed for Chapter 7 bankruptcy in early April 2012, only a year after receiving the deal. Why that's so interesting to mention though is because the company wrote on their website that they'd have to be temporarily pausing the service due to a higher than expected demand. The company officially closed in 2016 with more than 500,000 down the drain. Mark and Kevin named it their worst investment to date. It was a great concept and the numbers seemed promising but sadly they proved unable to execute even with names like Cuban and O'Leary behind it. It's a sad story, it really is. Cactus Jack for his push-up machine, the Body Jack. But there was one big catch. I'd like the contingency to be that you try your new machine out, you lose 30 pounds. Cactus, do we have a deal? Number eight, the body jack. Obesity is a serious epidemic which surrounds all demographics and Jack Barringer was no exception. He was told by his doctor to exercise more often, which for some reason specifically included push-ups. Understandably, push-ups weren't the easiest task for Jack, so he came up with the body jack, a machine specifically designed for this purpose. If you're going to sell exercise equipment, the face behind the product needs to reasonably be healthy at least, right? Otherwise, where's the proof it actually works? So in order to get an investment, Barbara offered Jack a deal which first involved him having to lose 35 pounds and fast. And well, he did. 243! Wow. Yeah! Good job, Cactus. So keeping to her side of the bargain, Barbara, along with one of the show's original sharks, Kevin Harrington, coughed up the 180,000 investment but sadly, this didn't end well. Seemingly out of nowhere, the company just fell apart for no reason, and rather than Jack losing another 50 pounds to promote the product, Barbara was out more than 50,000. So just imagine you're at a dinner party, or maybe even a tailgate. Better yet, we're at a local bar with some friends having some champagne. Number seven, Breathometer. Scoring a big deal with all five sharks in season five's episode, Charles Yim received a hefty $650,000 investment for his portable breathalyzer company, Breathometer, from Mark, Kevin, Robert, Damon, and Lori for 30% of his company. It was wildly successful at first. Not long after sales skyrocketed, the FTC became weary of the product and did further investigation. After some testing, the FTC determined that both the original breathometer along with its successor Breeze were both being falsely advertised to the consumers, claiming to be 100% accurate and proven by government lab grade testing. Needless to say, the company was charged big time. On top of that, they had to refund a total of more than 5.1 million to all customers. Uh, Cole, did you have friends? a product? in this kind of retail environment before. Uh, I've, I've worked in the frozen food product uh, category, yeah. Number six, sweet balls. 
Sweetball's pitch was a total roller coaster filled with doubt from the Sharks, but still James McDonald and Nicole Egger somehow managed to pull out a $250,000 investment from Mark Cuban in exchange for 25% of the delicious cake ball company. But while the Sharks were bickering amongst themselves, it made it that much more difficult to realize that these two business partners also didn't see eye to eye on everything. This eventually led to a lawsuit after the episode being aired due to an apparent breach in contract. Things got even messier for Mark and the Sweet Bunch when the Sweetballs.net website was rigged to redirect visitors to CakeBalls.com, which Egger controlled. That compiled with a few other, um, instances, led to McDonald asking for a restraining order against Egger. This eventually caused Mark to withdraw from the deal, shedding negative light onto the business, perhaps making it the most embarrassing outcome on the show yet. My name is Desiree Estrada, and this is my partner, Arlene Battisil, and we are GoGo -Go Gear. Number 5, GoGo -Go Gear. Making their appearance on the show in 2012, Desiree Estrada and Arlene Batishal introduced GoGo -Go Gear, a brand of stylish motorcycle gear which still offers full protection at an asking price of $300,000 in return for 15% stake in their company. The pitch was a total disaster and it almost seemed as though the deal wouldn't be made. But the big market for our product is in Europe because you've got 35 million registered riders there. That is there. a horrible, 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 horrible. Did I say that was a horrible answer? Kevin was out from the beginning, leaving Mark, Robert, and Barbara to tear apart the two entrepreneurs because of their ridiculous company valuation of nearly two million. I see how you're calculating it based well, on the no, no, equity. Desiree, Desiree, I'm not calculating that. Based on I'm the equity that we're asking That's for. Just math. Okay. Where were you a manager at? As well as their far-fetched marketing plan to reach the Euro market. Eventually, Damon took a bite of the business, but for 65% equity for 300,000. Robert's out. But I got good news for you. I'm in. <laughs> There couldn't have been a worse time to make this deal, however, as the very niche clothing market for motorcyclists crashed almost overnight, losing nearly half of all potential retailers. Damon almost took a big hit as well, but was able to withdraw his own original deal and instead will remain as a mentor for Desiree and Arlene until the market would pick up again, and boy did it. So while Damon technically wouldn't regret making the deal, he'd later regret withdrawing from the investment which proved to be ridiculously profitable for what it was. My name is Mike, my name's Sean. We're from Parkland, Florida, and we're the founders of the next great American clothing company, Hillbilly Brand. Number 4, Hillbilly. With GoGo -Go and Gala by our side, it's proven that fashion business can be a risky one. Luckily for Mike Abaticcio and Sean Lees, however, this fact was proven far after their appearance on Shark Tank when they came up with the Hillbilly clothing line. And we're co-owners of Hillbilly Brand, a country lifestyle clothing brand. We are here to ask for a $50,000 investment for a 25% equity stake in our company. They even trademarked the words Hill and Billy. They appeared on the show seeking $50,000 for a 25% stake in the company and somehow ended up leaving under their agreement that they would get $75,000 for 100% of the company. $25,000 each. $25,000 each. You okay with that? And a 10% royalty on all sales with Damon, Robert, and guest shark Jeff Foxworthy. Unsurprisingly, the deal went nowhere. I mean, come on, that deal is just ridiculous, and as it would turn out, the entrepreneurs just used the show as an opportunity for free advertisement. Needless to say, the three sharks were pretty disappointed in the time they wasted. What we're going to do now is I'm going to show you the traditional way of connecting to the hydrant and the, also connect to the hydrant with the Hikon. Number 3, Hikon. During the show's second season, Jeff Strope gave the sharks an amazing pitch for Hikon, a fire hose hardware manufacturing company. Okay, gentlemen, let's begin now. As you can see, the Hikon is already connected. He asked for, in my opinion, a very reasonable 500,000 for 40%, which would help with producing the product. Seriously though, this is how a pitch should be done. Strub demonstrated what his connector could do and how it could make for a huge difference for firefighters, shaving off valuable seconds and even minutes from the time it takes to connect a host to a fire hydrant. Mark Cuban saw potential and sought to acquire the company and its patents for $1.25 million and also giving Jeff a three-year employment deal as well as royalties. Unfortunately, neither party saw eye to eye as Mark was more interested in commercializing the product right off the bat and after a few weeks of actually thinking the deal over, decided to opt out. Since I haven't opened uh, my doors yet to so actually have a revenue, I have tested the market. I actually told a few blogs. Oh, so you haven't sold any of You Smell yet. No, Number two, You Smell Soap. 
In season 3, Megan Cummins pitched her luxury soap company to the Sharks and managed to pick up a deal from Robert Herjavec for $55,000 for 20%. What kind of names when you say big names, who were they? The biggest one would be Urban Outfitters. They asked, you know, how fast I could have stuff made and what quantities. As Cummins would state later on though, she never got the money. She turned down deals from Mark and Barbara, hoping to make it work with Robert and apparently tried contacting him for six months. Robert finally got back to Cummins but further reviewed the deal we saw on the show and mocked up a new deal for $55,000 for 50% of the company. Cummins respectfully declined it and could not have been at a worse time. The You Smell the Soap pitch was aired on television and the demand was outstanding. Unfortunately, Cummins didn't receive the funding she had hoped for and simply could not supply the orders. Although business has been able to bounce back, any connections coming had to the show were now non-existent. Hello Sharks, my name is Stephanie. And I'm her husband, Daniel. And our business is The Smart Baker. And finally, number one, The Smart Baker. Entering the Shark Tank seeking $75,000 investment in exchange for 25% of their company, Daniel and Stephanie introduced their Smart Baker brand, a company which creates and sells products that make the baking process a little less complicated for those home bakers. And have all this information at a baker's fingertips when they need it. And we're better to put this than on their apron. What's unique is that it's printed upside down so you can read it while you're wearing it. Ultimately, they chose Barbara because of her familiarity with the baking industry as well as connections at a deal of 75,000 to 40 percent along with 5 percent of royalties until her money is made back. And if you'd be willing to do that, he's going to make the exact same offer the guy who knows nothing about baking just made. 75,000 for 40 Unfortunately, this deal of hers also fell through after performing her due diligence on the two and just felt it to be far too risky. Though she might be regretful of that decision now as the smart baker has made it into the list of successful stories after being featured on the tank. And that concludes 10 worst shark tank deals they regret taking. If you've enjoyed the video, make sure you leave a like, comment, and subscribe for more content to come in the future. Also, on screen now is going to be various annotations to other videos similar to this one, so if you've enjoyed this one, go check them out. You'll like those too, but before you leave, before you check those other videos out, make sure to check the very bottom of the description. There's a link to a good foundation for a good cause, but other than that, Thank you for watching and have yourselves a great day.